this video, I'm going to introduce folks to the basics of MASH, which is one of the plugins as far as being able to create procedural effects in Maya and then export them out to an editing software such as After Effects to add the final touches here. Oftentimes in 3D modeling and animation, what we'll find ourselves is in a situation whereby we may need hundreds, if not thousands, of items being as far as explosions are concerned or animations are concerned. So MASH kind of helps us with that a little bit. Now, before beginning, you're going to need to make sure, and this is in Maya 2023, that you do have MASH loaded as far as the options go. Again, friendly reminder, if you need to find that, under Windows, Settings and Preferences, you want to check your Plugin Manager and make sure that MASH is loaded. If MASH is loaded, you will have your tab icon here, but also as well, under FX, you will have MASH appearing as a dropdown. Now, depending on what you're working on, and for the sake of my computer, I'm only going to use a basic polygon. Oftentimes, whenever you see folks talking about this on the net or whenever they're doing demonstrations, we stick to the low polygons. The reason being is you actually have two options whenever you're creating the MASH networks, which I'll get to in a moment. You can either stick to the geometry or you can create instances of the geometry. Now, instances normally means much better performance, but geometry gives you a lot more control and editable options. So that's why you might see a lot of folks whenever, if you're watching and trying to learn about MASH, we often stick to a basic polygon. So for my demos, I am going to stick to a circle I'll start off with here. Another thing about the MASH networks is that whenever you're working, I'm going to take my, an my timeline back down to 200 here. You also start to get into animation. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm just going to add a sphere just into the center of the scene. Nothing special. And what we're going to do now is keeping that highlighted I'm going to go ahead and come under the MASH drop-down. And reminder, if you're not seeing that, you could actually also get to the same place through your tab, but I'm under FX as my drop-down. And I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to choose to create a MASH network. And what I'd like to do is open up the window option for everybody so you can actually see what's going on behind the scenes here. If you are brand new to MASH, you actually don't have to do a lot here. You can leave the network name as is. You don't have to worry about setting a uh, preset location. Distribution type, uh, it's up to you how you want to have the initial state be. However, this is something that you can change on the fly once you start working inside of the MASH network. As I referenced earlier, though, notice the geometry type. You have mesh and you have instancer. For larger scenes where you are dealing with hundreds, if not potentially maybe breaking a thousand, you might want to think about instancers. Because I'm going to only be dealing with maybe like 20 spheres, I'm going to stick to the mesh. I'm going to go ahead and leave the distribution type at the default. I'm going to apply and close. And what you should see happen here is now I have a bunch of spheres. Now, before I go any further, I want to draw your attention to a few things that have happened as far as your interface is concerned in Maya. Number one, over in the outliner. Again, I'm working in the general workspace. If you notice, the sphere itself is now grayed out or hidden from view. You now have what is called the mesh repro mesh, what is being displayed in here and being edited. And then on top of that, you have the waiter or the main distribution plugin. The waiter in your outliner is where pretty much all of your magic happens. This is where all of the options pertaining to what was applied to, in our case, the sphere, is going to happen here. So I am going to extend that out a little bit just so you can see the attribute editor of it. But also, too, I want to talk briefly about some of the tabs that you have up here. First off, you have the default MASH waiter tab. This is where that if you decide, you can work with numerous different options as far as pre-made uh, designs and layouts and procedural interactions that can go through and you can work with. One nice thing about each of these is you can come in and whenever you hover, if you're not sure, you can actually click on more, just like other elements here, 
and it'll actually give you a video here to show you what the end result of that item is. However, since this video is intended for those just getting started here, I am going to stick to the basics as far as what we currently have, which is a distribute. Once you have something set as far as your overall mesh layout, you can come under the tab specific to that option. So here we have MASH1 Distribute. And with the MASH1 Distribute here, notice that I have options specific to this distribution. Now, one other thing that I'd like to bring up during this time here is the actual MASH editor. Some folks like to work with this on simultaneously with the attribute editor. Some folks don't see a reason to. With this in mind here, what this is, is this is more of like, I call it a visual representation, that if it's easier for you from a layers perspective, understanding what is attached or contained inside of your waiter. So right now you can see, I only have this distribute option available. Notice that the blue icon, as far as the turn on and off here, as far as my waiter is concerned. I can have numerous different types of nodes set simultaneously to A, be working together, but also B, that if I change my mind or need specific items, I can set that up too. So what I'm gonna do here though, is I'm just gonna, let's work with distribute for right now. Distribute actually is a very powerful option, whereby under distribute here, you can choose the number of points, which as you can see right now is my 10 spheres. I can, change this, I can increase or decrease even the number of points. I can also change as far as spanning from the X point. So I can make it super tight or I can spread them out. The distribution type, this is what I'd like to go back to for a second because whenever we first made our mesh waiter and assigned it to utilize the sphere for the repro mesh, we chose linear by default. You also have some options here where for instance, I can do radial and you can see how I can kind of change how tight the radial is. You can also do spherical, which kind of changes the radius there. You'd probably want some more points here as far as kind of creating a neat explosion effect and many, many more options here that I encourage you to play with. However, I'd like to go back to radial for right now because we are gonna add a couple of effects to this here. Now, once you have this set up here, one thing I'd also like to point out to you is the MASH1 Repro that also appears here. Here you can also choose and organize as far as the actual weight waiter as well, where you have the level of geometry, level of detail, your rotation order, and what objects are currently being affected here. As you continue on, this will become more important as far as organization and also too, as far as going through and adding additional controls to your animations or to your mesh waiter. Also though, at any point in time, you can come over to the repro mesh itself. The repro mesh actually acts just like a mesh that you would have on a standard sphere. So this is nice from the standpoint that I can come through, for instance, and you can see that I have a Lambert 1 assigned to this. I could come in and I could assign a new material to it if I chose. I could maybe choose a blind instead. And I can change the color as far as each of the elements here. I could even change as far as the eccentricity and all those other options here. Now, I've made some changes here. Let's go back into our mash here. I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna go under Arnold and I'm gonna just add a sky dome just so that I can get the IPR going here. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we've got some reflections going on as far as our design goes. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna come back into the mash waiter. 
and we're going to come under distribute. Right now, I have a radius here of 3.507. And what I'm going to do is actually take that down to zero. Now, from earlier demonstrations and thinking about animation processes, what you could do if you wanted to is you could actually come in and right click on the numerical value and set a key. And then maybe I come all the way out to say frame 141 or 140, let's say. And I want to increase, let's make it a nice round six. And I'm going to go ahead and set key. So now if I scrub through, you see how MASH has been able to help me here. Instead of having to worry about and go through and create each animation for each of these circles and to keep them perfectly distributed from one another, the MASH distribution in the waiter by animating the radius itself allows me to have a much cleaner animation going into my overall design process. Now, if I wanted to have maybe text flying at me or anything along those lines, this would be the point now where I would think about actually exporting it out to a program like Adobe After Effects. So this is kind of the power of MASH right here. It's not so much that it's taking the place of the 3D model or an animator, but it's more along the lines of it's making our jobs a little bit easier as far as things that we might have to do repetitively as far as layout and design. Hopefully this gets you started MASH distribute, you can do a lot with just with this one item as far as the MASH waiter is concerned. So that's your introduction to MASH. Hope it helps.